Okay, so let's talk about uh, digital advertising, uh, the primer, okay? Um, so I'm RJ, uh, I'm president of the American Marketing Association's Pittsburgh chapter. Uh, and like Emily, I too work at Pitt. Uh, I'm the manager of digital strategy uh, for the health sciences at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, you know, you can connect to me on LinkedIn. Uh, you should be able to just type in my name, but there's my my uh, address. And in fact, if uh, if you haven't checked your LinkedIn in a while, go ahead and check it because you will likely have a uh, a request from me to connect with you. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I do uh, a little bit of everything. So I do marketing, I do communications, uh, I do graphic design, I do social media. I've been a, a college professor for 15 years, um, but I've been a graphic designer for over 27. Um, I started as a designer when I was 11 years old. So I've been practicing design uh, for a very, very long time. And that's my connection to CCAC, teaching interactive design and graphic design. I used to be a, a tenured professor at Youngstown State University where uh, I taught primarily interactive design. Um, outside of my day job um, and my teaching, uh, well, not so much my teaching, but my day job, I do, uh, teach a lot. I teach marketing at Point Park University. I teach design at Point Park and CCAC. I teach advertising at Pitt and I teach user experience at Western Kentucky University. So uh, my interests cover a, a, a wide gamut of disciplines. So anytime you happen to have a, a question about any of these particular um, disciplines, let me know, uh, reach out, say hello. I'm happy to assist you with whatever you may need in that respect, especially uh, in my role as, as leader of AMA Pittsburgh. Um, some of you know this already, but I'm also a huge Lego fan. Uh, I'm an adult fan of Lego um, and I use Lego to build all different types of models um, that are displayed. And um, I'm always up to something. So. I uh, wholeheartedly recommend you connect with me and engage in conversation. I hope I can be an asset and resource for all of you while you are building your careers or looking to make a, a jump into uh, a new discipline. Uh, most of you, as I understand it, are graphic designers or have an aspect of your career or your education in graphic design or photography. Um, so I'm really glad that you are a part of this session because I am an example of how um, you can be uh, a lifelong graphic designer and still find value in becoming uh, a marketer or working in the marketing fields. Um, when I was in school, um, there was a very clear divide between the marketing students and the design students. And generally the belief was the marketing students didn't know their ass from a hole in the ground. Um, especially when it came to design. And the truth of the matter is that pretty much no one understands design as intimately and as immersively as you do, especially if you're a designer. Um, but one of the things that you may find throughout your career is that the, the, the number of positions that are available to graphic designers is significantly limited in comparison to that of a marketer. So, um, you know, when I was, uh, like I said, I was a tenured professor. I was in, driving from Pittsburgh to Youngstown every day. It was destroying my body. It was, you know, taking time away from my family. And I just decided to, I called my friends up at Pitt and said, hey, uh, I want to stay in higher ed. Is there any design or marketing positions available? And sure enough, there was a marketing job. And um, I was in that job for a year before I got promoted. And I was in that job for two years before I got promoted again. Um, so, you know, when it comes to graphic design, a lot of you designers in general have an amazing ability to learn uh, technology, learn new skills very, very quickly. That's not to say that marketers can't, um, but since you're the design audience, you know what I'm talking about. And your adaptability, your nimbleness, your ability to learn new skills more quickly and comprehensively, so breadth and depth. Um, primes you for a lot of great opportunities in adjacent fields like communications and marketing 
um, in advertising, et cetera. So that being said, um, my conversation with you is all about advertising, okay? And I want to, uh, you know, give you some insight on learning the, the digital marketing, uh, digital advertising marketplace, all right? Understanding the future of advertising and then understanding your role in uh, that, in advertising in general. Okay, so um, when it comes to advertising, advertising is going to ideally lead directly to growth. Uh, growth for your business, for your clients will come from ads that enable direct business outcomes. Um, if you've had me for class before, you've likely heard me talk about emotional manipulation and getting uh, consumers to do what I want them to do through telling a convincing visual story. That's essentially what, what advertising is. I want to pull, I want to use visuals to pull at your heartstrings and get you to act in accordance with my business objectives, which is to sell you a product, sell you a service, etc. Okay. So the ad format and getting the experience right is a foundational uh element to growing a business, to enabling growth, generating revenue. Designers, marketers, understand that at the end of the day, while you may not be uh, in business operations or you run your own business, maybe some of you will, um, at the end of the day, you need to be concerned about the growth of your organization, the growth of your company. You need to be invested in its growth. OK, um, it's not just, oh, I need to do an assignment. I make it and then it's out the door. Ask more questions about how the work that you're doing can be effective. How can it be measured to determine its efficacy, its effectiveness? OK, so um, ad formats that cannot be attributed to real humans in brand safe environments are expected to lose share to those that are brand safe and land at the point of decision-making in the consumer journey. And a lot of this has to do with um, making ads that create resonance, that create interest, that create uh, relatability, and then executing those ads at the right time and place to really capture someone's attention and manipulate them into acting in accordance with your goals. OK, so I say the word manipulation like it's something that's evil or, you know, frowned upon. And and it's really not. This is just marketing. This is capitalism. And this is how uh, you are going to do the work. Uh, some of you may have um, maybe an objection to doing advertising. Um, and that's all well and good. I love the challenge of advertising. I think it's an amazing field to be in, not just because of the, the business uh, and marketing aspects of it and how you can be a, a huge part in a small machine that can you know, revolutionize a product or a culture, um, but it's the challenge. How do you use visual rhetoric essentially to convince something to to convince someone to do something you want them to do without ever encountering that person, without even you know knowing them. I think it's an amazing challenge. Um, so for, for many of you that are students, think about the ads that you saw that made you enroll in college. What was there, was there a particular ad that resonated with you that said, I have to go there. I have to participate in this program. Um, so we'll get into more of that as the slides go by. So as consumer behavior shifts and consumers adopt more digital forward behavior and demand better digital experiences, user experience, digital advertising needs to meet the consumers where they are, all right, or else they face negative consequences, all right? So this is why advertising is important. OK, and advertising grows year over year over year over year. OK, um, I won't read the notes here, but I'll just cover the highlights. Television and video. Well, now that uh, there are so many people cutting the cord on cable, uh, the streaming services are incorporating 
commercials into their paid tiers of subscription. So you have to watch commercials. All right. You're never, there's never a situation where you're going to avoid a commercial uh, unless it's uh, HBO or Netflix, where they've specifically removed that from their subscription plans. And even then, like I know Netflix has messed, you know, tested uh, commercial breaks in, in their programming. Nevertheless, um, money will continue to be spent in these areas and it will be spent by billions of dollars year over year. It's forecasted that uh, on digital TV, internet video, over 20, $34 billion will be spent in tw by 2024. $34 billion. Where are you in that $34 billion? Are you a producer? Are you a consumer? Are you both? Um, that's, that's an incredible statistic. Mobile advertising, 71 and 66% of consumers indicate that they are using smartphones and digital streaming services. Ads projected to be spent, uh, be spending over $117 billion by 2024, okay? Absolutely insane, the money that is being rolled into advertising, okay? Uh, ad agencies all across the planet are, are celebrating this. They want to see more money being spent because that's more money coming into their agencies. And that is more opportunity for designers such as you to get hired into those agencies to produce that kind of work, okay? Esports, $86 million by 2024. That will absolutely grow into the hundreds of millions uh, as time moves on. Music and radio, $4.3 billion. Podcasts. $1.6 billion in advertising revenue. Virtual reality, uh, that's an amazing thing to think about. Uh, $1.5 billion reach by 2024. So some of you are probably thinking, well, you know, I just want to get a job and I just want to design cool shit. I just want to make things happen. I want to use my creativity to make things. That's what I want to do. Great. That's awesome. Love it. Pursue that for sure. However, Think about the kind of things that you want to make. Advertising will always be around. So when you're thinking about the types of jobs that you want, maybe you should look at ad agencies. Maybe you should look at more advertising and specializing in that versus being uh, an in-house comms or marketing or in-house designer uh, for internal marketing, internal communication. Um, you know, there are ad agencies all across the planet. You could literally work anywhere. And especially now with remote working, you could work for anyone anywhere from the comfort of your own home and not be afraid necessarily to lose your job uh, due to a recession or some other sort of uh, pitfall. So there's, there's always money in advertising. Um, and for my Arrested Development fans out there, if that sounded like there's always money in the banana stand, that was absolutely the cadence I was looking for. So uh, let's take this a, a step further. 71% of connected TV viewers, meaning they use Disney Plus, Hulu, uh, Paramount Plus, prefer either a free or low cost ad supported subscription model. I have Disney Plus, um, but my Hulu subscription has uh, ads in it. Um, many of the channels that you can use on Roku for free uh, are ad supported. Practically everything is ad supported. That's only going to grow over time. These subscription, uh, digital subscription channels, they don't make all of their money from your subscriptions. Uh, there's just no possible way. Disney, Netflix, HBO, they're a little bit different. Their businesses are structured based on, you know, advertising free subscriptions. And that's all well and good. But some, if not most of these streamers cannot afford that. Um, so they get paid a lot of money by companies that want to sell you crap. Uh, when was the last time you watched Hulu uh, and what commercials are you being fed and being fed repeatedly? Uh, an example that I have is um, my daughter watches some free channel on Roku and um, it plays the same ad four times in a row. And it's super loud and it's very annoying. But that streaming channel can charge that client, that advertiser, four times in a row for showing their ad that often. And that's a part of how they generate revenue. So 71% uh, uh, of, of connected TV viewers 
<laughs> uh, yeah, you're tired of the subway ads on Hulu. Yes, absolutely. 71% um, prefer ads that are tailored to their personalized interests and shopping habits. So if you don't shop at Subway, you don't get food at Subway, then yeah, that would be particularly annoying. Uh, so they want to try to, you know, develop uh, targeting for these ads based on your interests. And these platforms understand your interests by the shows that you watch not only just the shows that you watch but the episodes that you watch how many times you've watched them when you watch them like time of day so on so forth. okay and then 90 percent of consumers find impersonal advertising annoying subway the example i just said um Advertising that has no application to you whatsoever is just noise. It's just annoying. So who's been scrolling through their Facebook feed and finding ads that resonate with them, that pique their interests, that apply to their interests? Um, you might be seeing more and more of that because the targeting on Facebook and Instagram is getting better and better. And that's because you're feeding them more and more data about you specifically. So uh, why not advertising? And, and there's four separate areas here. Well, there's too many ads. The ads are intrusive and annoying. They're, they're sharing something with me that I do not care about. Um, what about the, the abuse of data or the lack of transparency? Yeah, maybe in some of those cases where you're getting ads that specifically appeal to your interests, Maybe there is a data leak or uh, an advertiser who is improperly using your data to channel to target ads directly at you that has happened okay um and some of those ads are just not relevant uh i get a ton of not relevant ads on youtube and youtube by the way is my favorite social media platform i i'm on it all the time i can learn i can be entertained um anything i want there it basically happens um and i don't have to deal with the noise necessarily of like twitter and and uh, all of that. Nevertheless, um, there are many reasons why you shouldn't advertise. However, think of a situation, especially for yourselves, where, where maybe you're not advertising. Uh, the other day, my one of my uh, supervisors came up to me and said, RJ, we're in the health sciences. We are basically the academic wing of UPMC. And UPMC is a major Leviathan, gigantic medical health provider. Why should the health sciences advertise? And I said to them, if you don't advertise, if you don't market yourself, then you are opening the door for all of your competitors to do the marketing for you. You will let them control the narrative. They will, you will let them uh, control the voice. You will let them control everything. You, you give them the farm, right? Um, you, you got to advertise. You have to market, even if it's not a, a primary goal. You have to get the voice out. You have to control your brand. You have to protect your brand. And a lot of that is done through advertising. So let's look at the biggest players in the game. Well, you've got search and display, Google, Bing, Amazon, Alibaba, you've got social media, YouTube, Facebook, Pinterest, Reddit, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Twitch. I feel like you could make a We Didn't Start the Fire kind of song out of that. Um, I'm going to leave that up to Lorenzo and Emily to come up with the lyrics, uh, music and lyrics to that. Thank you. Uh, I'll ask you about it later. Um, <laughs> uh, thinking about your uh, connected TV. Netflix, Disney, Hulu, Paramount, Peacock, HBO Max. It just occurred to me that I have all of those. I don't pay for Sling and I don't pay for YouTube, but uh, I pay for, for all of those other ones, um, except for HBO. Thanks, Lorenzo. Uh, and then uh, looking at uh, podcasts. Uh, where are my podcast people at? Do I have any diehard podcast listeners in the room? If so, just... Tell me what you're listening to in the chat. Uh, Midroll, Red Circle, Advertise Cast, iHeartRadio. There's like 20 different places that you can advertise your brand, your products. And how expensive can it be? Well, in my previous job at Pitt, 
I was the director of digital marketing and uh, for the, the business schools. Um, and a lot of the advertising that I did covered Google, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, and we didn't do any advertising on streaming platforms or in podcasts, though that was a part of the plan. Uh, before I left, we mostly did search engine marketing and social media marketing. And, you know, for what it's worth, later on in a few weeks, RJ Hubert is going to do a really great presentation on search engine marketing. So uh, I'm excited for that. But with Google, you can spend as little as $11 a day. Uh, Facebook, you put in a number and Facebook will find a way to spend all of your money. So I was maybe spending a thousand dollars every two months on Facebook and Instagram. On LinkedIn, I was spending anywhere from five hundred to two thousand dollars on uh, in mails. So uh, the streaming platforms are also not super expensive, especially if you target regionally or locally. Um, I think they're cheaper than going through like KDK or WPXI or something like that. Nevertheless. Um, it is affordable to advertise, okay? Some of you will be designing graphics and videos that go on these platforms. You need to think about how to do that type of work from a conceptual point of view. How do you tell visual stories over a, a time-based sequence? Um, how do you use language to incentivize people to uh, click on your links? So. Think about your, your place in, in your role in that type of work. Goals. The most common goals for digital advertising include brand awareness. Hello, I'm over here. This is who I am. This is what I do. Look what I can do. Pay attention to me. Okay. So creating brand awareness and then creating reach. Telling as many people as possible about who I am, what I do, where I do it, how I do it, all of those things. The greater the reach, the greater the brand awareness, all right? But it's not just one thing where you create a message and you send it out as many people as possible, hoping for the best. You have to send out that message to as many people as possible continually, repetitively, and that will create brand awareness, that will create brand loyalty, that will create customers, and ultimately, uh, that will create brand advocates. Um, those are the folks that will live and die by your brand, regardless of what happens. My favorite shoe, Adidas Sambas. I've been wearing them since I was 14. It's a soccer shoe that came out in the 40s. It's an amazing product. Uh, I don't know anything about the Adidas brand beyond that. But those shoes are awesome. And I will, I will be buying those till the day I die. And I think I've owned like a couple dozen pairs throughout my life. So I wouldn't have known about that uh, had it not been for, you know, some of the advertising that I saw uh, with athletes when I was younger and impressionable, uh, so on and so forth. Another common goal for digital advertising is to create traffic. All roads point to the website. If I am marketing to you on a streaming platform, on social media, in an email blast, all roads, all of those point to the website. I need to make sure that my website is optimized and is telling the best story possible for, um, for you to, to hook you in and, and get you to buy what I'm selling. Um, conversion. So conversion is when, uh, in fact, all of you were converted. So I promoted the 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 momentum program uh, via my classes, via the television screens on campus, via social media. You were within my reach, you became aware and you converted yourself. Oh, thanks Sophia. Yeah, absolutely cool kicks. Uh, you converted yourself, you registered for the program. So that is when I make a sale essentially and not in this case, cause it was you know mostly grant supported. Anyway, um, you're interested, you're a potential buyer, you buy the product, that is a conversion. Conversions are a huge, highly valuable metric when it comes to advertising. And then remarketing and retargeting. How can I take my ad campaign and apply it to different audiences? Uh, audiences that weren't initially a part of my uh, outreach. 
Uh, maybe I have an ad and it's like, yeah, you know what? Um, we were primarily advertising to uh, men age 35 to 50 uh, in the North Hills of Pittsburgh, but we might have something here where we can use this ad with uh, men age 20 to uh, you know, 34 um, in Greensburg and still get a uh, really good traction on that. So you can change your marketing tactics while still using the same type of, of ad piece. So how can you designers uh, understand the basics of digital advertising? What's the type of creative? What's the type of goal? What's the strategy? Who is the audience? What's the type of audience? And what's the type of platform? So use the ABCD method. Grab attention, focus on branding, connect with the consumer, drive the consumer to action, okay? Questions you would need to ask yourself. How is what I'm creating catching the consumer's attention? How does my creative, my visuals, my design stand out from my competitors? Does it at all? If it doesn't, is that okay? If it does, is that also okay? How far do you want to stray from what your potential clients or customers uh, find comfortable? So there's an acronym that I like to use. It's called MAYA, M-A-Y-A, Most Advanced Yet Acceptable. This is a principle used in user experience that really focuses on incremental progress. How far can I push an idea before the intended audience taps out? They disengage. It's too much for them to understand. So advertising, especially with the ABCD method, is all about trying to find that, that Maya spot, trying to be as creative and as exceptional as possible while still engaging your audience. And these are the types of questions you need to ask. So when you focus on branding, how does the ad focus on the established brand? What are the brand ideals? What are the brand pillars, the emotional content behind the brand? How does that resonate in your visuals? Um, can the Will the consumer make a mistake and confuse your ad for someone else? Well, you know, I work in higher education where all of the ads are practically the same. So how do you make them different? Well, I make them different by way of the visuals. And I can do that because like the Pitt brand, for example, gives me the opportunity to be expressive and creative and imaginative. Uh, not to, you know, poo-poo CCAC, uh, but they make it a little bit more difficult. Um, there are finite limits to both brands, um, but it's your job to find that sweet spot of innovation. So how do you connect with your consumer? What are the pain points or what's the fantasy that the creative displays? Well, advertising generally promotes a solution or an experience of a solution, okay? It doesn't promote a problem. An ad should not say like, are you thirsty? Here, have a seven up. We should see an ad that shows someone feeling very refreshed and, and relaxed and grateful to be drinking a 7-Up because that's how it makes them feel. You see that ad and you're like, oh man, I wish I had a 7-Up. That would be so good right now. Crisp, refreshing, sweet 7-Up. Um, and then you go buy one because you want to feel that experience. And then driving the consumers to action. How can the design complement the CTA or the call to action from the ad? Um, your design needs to emphasize and complement the call to action. So if I make an ad for 7up, I need to know where to buy it. Well, maybe the ad says, you know, find it at your local grocer, okay? Or maybe the ad is an insert, like a print insert that you get in the mail and it says, come on this day and time, or here's a coupon, or if it's an ad that features the website link, that's gonna be in the bottom right-hand corner, right next to the logo. Um, that is uh, going to complement the call to action. So I start with an ad from the top to bottom, and I just, from left to right, so it's a Z pattern. And I start with the headline, and in the bottom right-hand corner, I see the, the URL, the website, and the logo, complete story. And the visual is the thing that tells 
the story the most. So you really need to understand visual metaphor in advertising. Okay, so uh, let's talk about goals and strategy. Brand awareness and reach, well, I talked about that. Traffic to a desired resource, bringing people to the website, converting them, making the sales, and then remarketing. So questions you should ask yourselves. With brand awareness, how will the creative extend beyond those who already know us? Traffic, how can the design encourage people to want to learn more? Conversion, how can your design work with marketing to make people want to buy something? And then remarketing, these people already know us. How does my design work with the marketing message to wake these people up, attract them, get them back into the fold? We lost them once, let's get them back. How does that work? These are questions you need to ask yourself. So let's talk about audience. Uh, what are the, the trends uh, in your audience? So um, consumers are shifting to a mobile first experience. Advertise to people where they live. They live on their phones, all right? Who gets hand cramps from holding their phone all the time? Who gets tendonitis in their wrist or their palms or their fingers from constant usage of their phone? All right, everybody is leading towards a mobile first experience. So you need to design with a mobile first philosophy, okay? How do you design your ads to accommodate a mobile device, particularly in the vertical orientation? How does my design translate across a phone, a tablet, uh, a laptop, a desktop, a screen at a kiosk, the ATM, in your car? wherever, screens are all around us, okay? Um, there's a, a consumer rise in, in connected TV. Am I marketing and is my marketing team st staying up to date on the latest platforms and the requirements for those platforms? How do you make an ad compelling on Hulu when most people ignore them? Well, uh, unfortunately, uh, Evelyn, I hope I got your name right. If I if I didn't, I'll, I'll assume it's like Evelyn. Um, I'm sorry in advance, but um, you remember the subway commercials and that they're annoying. And it could be they're annoying because they are always repeating themselves. But you remember, and I would guarantee, I'd venture to say that you are not done eating at Subway in your life, even if you're not eating there now or haven't in years. They are living rent free in your brain because of that. You may still remember saying this tonight, next year, okay? And that's a part of retention that, that we want, okay? Uh, continuing increase in multi-screen use. Who puts their phone down, says I'm done for the night, and then goes directly in front of their TV to watch something? Um, whose refrigerator has a screen in it? Everywhere, our cars have it. Our watches have it. Who has a watch and a phone and they're connected together and they're doing the same or similar things? So uh, adoption of future technology, uh, you know, things like the metaverse, um, you know, it took a, a, a rough stumble um, this year and last year, especially throughout the, the major phases of the pandemic. Um, it'll be back. It will absolutely be back. So prepare accordingly. And then the appropriation of user-generated content or influencers paying people to generate content for you. Um, if you've ever watched Pittsburgh uh, television, then you would know that the Steelers and the Penguins and uh, you know the Pirates players are all recruited to do advertising for practically anything in Pittsburgh. Um, you can use influencers to, to move the needle on your conversions. You could also advertise with influencers on Instagram where someone has like 20 million followers. Um, but you can also tap into uh, fans of your brand on social media and have them create messaging for you. Platforms. Search and display. Do I have the right specs for the campaign? Am I speaking to the right people? Are my search terms accurate? Social media, do I have the right information for marketing to target folks on social? Does my creative stand out on social? When you're doom scrolling, what are the types of images or designs that stick out to you? Try to remember that, take screen captures of it. 
remember those things because if you can cut through the noise of a doom scroll, especially like an hour long doom scroll, then you might have something that is truly unique. Uh, what about connected TV? Uh, will each platform need a different design solution? Will I need to tell a different story across the different platforms? What are their needs? Um, what about uh, ad technology, ad networks? Um, and that's a whole other field entirely. Podcasting, um, if the visualist medium, the theater of the mind, if narration or acting is involved, does this, uh, you know, uh, how does, how does the, the tone of voice, how does the, the sound effects, the everything, the writing of the script, how does that affect not only the creative process, but the experience that your end users are having? So what's the future? There are a ton of opportunities here for you and marketers alike. Continuing to adopt new types of advertising technology, using first party data, um, building audience segments that are based on interests, okay? Building better data platforms that capture more information about consumers will lead to more effective targeting, okay? Community-driven engagement, okay? Discords, Facebook groups, Slacks, okay? Um, gated communities that is such a powerful tool that many of you are a part of and are being advertising to within those communities and you don't even know it. User experience design that influences first party data. You are willingly submitting your information to these companies because the user's experience is so optimized and seamless that it's not even a question you may have of giving up your, your, your data. And then personalizing websites to appeal to your interests. YouTube is perfect at this. The algorithms are delivering you content that is going to speak to your interests uh, till the cows come home. What are the threats? Loss of data, democratization of creative design, so that means if a company is not hiring you in favor of UGCs, um, then yeah, you may stand to lose out, but there's also opportunities there to still become a part of that UGC community. Um, growing distrust amongst consumers with digital advertising. If you think the algorithms on Facebook are listening to you, I think you're wrong. Okay, look at your search history, look at your cookies, look at the integration of your apps on your devices, on your laptops. And, you know, at the end of the day, the algorithms are just so good at understanding the data that you are creating that it becomes weird when you say a phrase um, that you might have said weeks ago, and then it just all of a sudden delivers you an ad based on that exact same thing you said. It's freaky, but the algorithms are, they are the business, okay? Um, rise of bad actors misusing data, uh, Cambridge Analytica, if anyone remembers that. Um, and then rising costs. The more people that are doing advertising, the more costs there will be. The more people, the less venues, the more expensive those venues become to advertise on. So in conclusion, marketers can only make advertising that drives desired business outcomes when it is complemented by intentional design. You designers uh, are going to be responsible for producing these visuals and really trying to emotionally manipulate people into doing what you need them to do. And that benefits you, that keeps you employed, that elevates your stock with your bosses, with your teams. And when everything's firing all cylinders, you'll have a, a great experience. Um, but ultimately, this will also give you more and more opportunity to expand into areas of your career that you perhaps never thought you would be able to do. So uh, I will conclude there and I will happily take uh, any questions that you may have. And I'll also take this time to breathe. What do you think? Did, I hear crickets, Emily.
No, I think you heard a bulldog sniffing around. <laughs> oh, is that what that was? Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, I have a question. I do have a question because I'm glad that I stuck with this because I add scared of crap out of me, especially digital ones. So my question is, I mean, you could give me the entire presentation. It felt like that was like the answer. <laughs> but for, for someone like me that is afraid of all the creepy data in digital advertising, I'm sure I'm not alone. What What's your answer for that? Oh, I don't want to do ads. Uh, you don't have to. Um, because it, even if you aren't doing ads, um, you are still promoting your product or your company through the work that you're doing. So the next set, uh, let's, you know, the, let, the panel coming up in like 15 minutes, that's all about content marketing. And you're doing content marketing. So you're writing articles, you're producing social media, you know, maybe some videos, uh, producing a magazine. So essentially, like you are creating content that is not directly an advertisement, but it is still distributed in mass to people to consume. And it is still espousing the brand ideals of your unit or your product or your company. Um, so it's just a different form of advertising. It's more like you're telling a story uh, behind that, that represents the brand where an advertisement is just a fleeting moment in time that is meant to capture your attention for like two seconds. And if we get you for longer than that, then great. But a story that you would be writing, that's like an immersive piece. Like that's a two minute, five minute, sometimes longer read. So um, what I found is that Advertising is, can be uh, is perceived as challenging because you have to solve a ton of problems within an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper or a, a twelve hundred by eight hundred graphic on social, and that is incredibly difficult to do. Um, and you know, you're never going to be able to hit all the marks because if you do, then your design would be a jumbled mess of type and starbursts and, and comic sans and don't get me started on that. So the operative thinking here is with advertising, less is more. When you lean into the emotional content and visual metaphor and especially strong visuals, you won't need to um, com over communicate. Um, but I would say the additional part to that is you have to also be willing to study advertising in order to do it. Um, so if your perception of it is only from being a consumer, um, then you might be a, a, a limited in your ability to actually make it. Um, it's when you get into the, the, the nuts and bolts of it and understand it on a diagnostic level that you'll be able to um, start to make it. Um, for me, uh, you and I would actually start at the same point. The difference is you would go tell a long form story. I would tell a short form story and I would tell that story in as few words as possible. But uh, again, I'm visually, uh, not that you aren't visually minded, but like your training is different than mine. I went to six years of art school, you know, uh, and that's all I saw were people telling visual stories. Um, so, you know, uh, one point of, of inspiration for me, uh, I love looking at printmaking and oil paintings to get ideas for advertising. And it's like, these things aren't even related. Um, but it's, when I look at those things, especially with my artist background, I'm trying to understand the process that's coming behind it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a multifaceted response, but I appreciate the question. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I answered it. <laughs> yeah, it's helpful. It was helpful. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, Sophia asks, in your opinion, was the best way for an established brand to or company to grow their audience on social media? Like what kinds of posts, infographics? Um, you know, there are a lot of conditions there that I think would need to be understood uh, because growth can occur in a number of different ways. Um, if, if it's a company selling consumer products, um, then, you know, I would recommend, um, you know, content or a community-based marketing, uh, letting your audience 
giving them a, a platform, a venue to, to talk about your brand and encouraging them to do so. Um, and, you know, really supporting their efforts. Um, I think that is an amazing way to connect people to a brand, to create emotional resonance between a person and a brand, to create relatability. Um, it's not just like, hey, buy my shit, buy my shit, buy my shit. Um, that kind of advertising gets uh, old really quick. And in, in fact, like the consumer is just going to mute it out because they aren't being asked to participate in something greater than themselves. Um, so I think community-based marketing is, is a really great way to grow. Um, and then posts and stories that feature people within your community and, and the products that they use from your company um, and how those products have, have changed their lives, giving them a, an opportunity to, to champion your brand, essentially. Uh, Jolene, you ask, uh, you mentioned one digital advertisement opportunity is UX design that in, influences first party data collection. Okay. Um, so this is basically in reference to creating a, an, an experience that um, resonates with you so much that you don't mind giving up your, your phone number, your home address, even some other qualitative data about like maybe your opinion of a brand. Generally, uh, these are going to be uh, opportunities from companies that you may already follow or believe in or buy a lot of products from. So for example, I mentioned like, I'm a huge Lego guy, right? Um, Lego has a, a really great seamless user experience with their website, but also their in-store models. So it's, it's a philosophy that correlates throughout the entire company. Um, and part of their goal is like, First off, it's fun. Everybody, play is fun. Everybody is welcome here. It's inclusive. Um, and, you know, they don't have to necessarily offer you an incentive to give up your information. Um, they make strong quality products that are fairly priced um, in any market. Um, they have a lot of brand champions, but more, more, most specifically to that, um, people like me that grew up with Lego. We've always been brand champions because Lego turned something on in our brain. We were able to create something out of seemingly nothing. It is like one of the purest forms of creativity, similar to pencil to paper. Okay. Um, and through that process, like I became a designer because of Lego. So my narrative there, it appeals to my idealized self-concept, like, I'm a designer still 27 years later because Lego was so important to me. I'll tell them anything that they want to know. And if their user experience is optimized and allows me to do that easily, either via phone, video, even typing it, then great. Um, so a, an optimized user experience uh, would allow an end user to provide their information in any number of different ways, but would also give them no rules. Like, tell us what you think in any way that you think it. And that's how people would part with their first party data. Um, how do algorithms work? I don't have time to get in, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but uh, if you connect with me on LinkedIn, I can provide you with some resources that will point you in the right direction. And I think that uh, there is a lot of mystery behind how they work um, because that's essentially proprietary information. Uh, recently, I, I think just as recent as a few days ago, Twitter um, uh, basically revealed their uh, aspects of, of their algorithm and how certain posts um, get more traction. So like if you get a like, your post is magnified in the feed by 30 times, something like that. So. Uh, Ask me on LinkedIn. And then uh, Savannah, uh, do you think that AI will impact marketing in the near future in a good way or a negative way? Um, so those AI tools aren't going away. Um, I don't think that they're going to uh, replace people, um, but at least not at the onset, not for a few years. Um, 
I also think that AI is going to, for all of you, you are in it now. You're in the infancy of AI, uh, at least in this, insofar as the million of different tools that are available. Get in on the ground floor. Learn how to use this stuff because that will make you competitive. New jobs will be spitting out of all of these tools. I've, I've seen phrases and, and titles thrown around like prompt engineer. You know, that's essentially just your writing. Okay, that's a writing position. Um, but a prompt engineer is going to be able to get the best outcomes out of the AI tools that you're using. Um, I'm trying to learn all of them as much as I can. And I'm trying to apply those tools into my work as much as I can, because I don't want to be like a 65 year old. First off, by the way, I'll die uh, before I retire. So, you know, uh, that's just how it's working with us elder millennials. But anyway, um, I want to, I want to be able to do that stuff when I'm much older and I don't want to be compromised because of the growth of technology, uh, eliminating my position. So the people that understand those tools, the most, the best are going to thrive in their careers now and in the, in the not too distant future. Um, so I don't, I think that they, the AI will be augments uh, to the work that you're doing um, if you know how to use it right. Uh, <laughs> Andrew, thanks for backing me up there. So uh, thank you all for your time and your questions. I am going to uh, stop the recording and we'll queue up uh, Dr. Dr. Doreen, Katie, Callie, and Chris.